Okay, so welcome back to another bit with device. And on this one, we need to talk about the humanize. So this is something that we get with the 4.1. And to be honest, this is a very simple uh, device. And uh, but I'm recording this because maybe you're starting it. Maybe you don't know. You're a little bit confused of why you get something like this. So okay, so that's why I'm making the video. Now, if you have a little bit of experience, you can you know, of course guess what what this is. So okay, so uh, let me just show you what I got right here. Uh, I have a clip with a kick and a hi hat, right? A very simple, dumb thing. Now, it, of course, we need to notice that the hi hats are perfectly in time. Perfectly in time. Okay, so of course, whenever you hear human human uh, you know music played by humans, the the factor of imperfection uh, kind of a makes this track make the track just a little bit better because if you uh, do something like this and you go all you know maybe go to the MIDI or just play an instrument and everything is just super perfect and super in time, it sounds a little bit weird. It sounds a little bit robotic, and even though it's perfect, you know the timing is perfect. It doesn't matter. We've been listening for music for ages. And whenever we hear music, we hear this movement and this imperfection. And we associate that sound with, you know, that sounds with something that sounds good. So whenever we hear something that is super perfect and super robotic, we, we kind of a, a feel that, that there's something weird going on. So that's why we you get the humanized. So you can do this kind of a weirdness without going right here and saying, okay, so this one is going to go a little bit behind and maybe you move it. This one is going to, you know, go behind like that and something like that. So you didn't have to go and do it manually. That's why you get this, uh, you know, device. So right now, if I play this, you get the head again in perfect time and the kick in perfect time. And I'm adding the kick so we have a we can have a perception of what's what the time is. And I don't have to add a uh, you know, the click, which I don't like. Okay. So the timing, what it will do, it will offset the hi-hats. And this is not something that it's gonna do uh, the same thing for all the MIDIs, all the MIDI notes. It's going to do it uh, on a random kind of a way. Some of them are gonna be, you know going behind and some of them will not so if i start going up we're going to start no to we're going to start to notice imperfections and at this point the hi-hat is kind of a going solo it's just way too much but maybe you like it and you don't want to keep it that's cool now i'm going to go and do something not that crazy. Maybe 10 milliseconds, still a lot, but... And I'm gonna go and on this inspect, I'm recording whatever that comes out from the hi-hat. So we're gonna see those imperfections. And we're gonna see how, you know, how this is uh, made behind the scenes. So okay, uh, that's enough. So I'm gonna go right here and I'm gonna check what it's going on. So notice that some notes are gonna be kind of in the right place and some other notes are just gonna be a little bit behind. This one is perfect. This one is a little bit behind. We cannot even notice this. Maybe this one, it's something that we will notice if we really listen closely, but it's just, it's, this is the way it works. Some of them are gonna be behind and some of them are just gonna be right in the place, right in place. So of course, my recommendation is just do uh, small settings. Now, of course, right now what it's doing, it's just push pushing everything behind, you know, some notes behind. So what happens if you want to rush some notes, right? You want to play it before. So I'm going to go and do minus, uh, plus and minus. So this is inverting or kind of uh, enabling the polarity to be negative and positive. So it means that it will apply this offset of in milliseconds and some of them are going to be rushing, some of them are just going to be dragging. So I'm going to go and just play it again. And I'm going to do something that we can really see. So I'm going to go. You can hear it as well. There we go. That was too much. Okay. So I'm going to go right here and let's see what we get. So I'm going to go and some of them are going to be rushing. Hopefully, yeah, this one is rushing. This one is dragging. So this one is very cool. But again, you just get a little bit of a kind of a, uh, again, a little bit of a human behavior right here. And it's really cool because now you don't have to do it manually, which is really great. It's something that sometimes, well, actually not sometimes, every single time, uh, takes a lot of time. 
to do it. Whenever you make a track and you make the MIDI and it's perfect and everything is cool, you want to add a little bit of the, that human behavior. And sometimes you just need to go and do it manually. And it sucks because it takes a lot of time. But now, you know, you get a nice, easy way of uh, kind of a randomizing all of this and just and get it anyways. So cool. So, okay. So this one is the timing. It's going to mess with the timing. Then you have the velocity. This one is going to mess with the velocity. And the velocity is a, a different thing, uh, another thing that makes a sound sound a little bit more human. And in the case of the hi-hat, it's just... Uh, it's a perfect example. If you if you think about this, whenever a drummer is just playing the hi hat, it's not consistent every single time. Uh, you, you're gonna detect a little bit, a little change on the velocity of how hard the drummer is playing the hi hat. And this is some is a natural movement, right? It's just a very natural movement. So whenever you hear and you hear you hear hi hat, real hi hat, you can hear this this change in, in velocity and how hard the drummer is hitting the the the, uh, the cymbals. And uh, now you can emulate it with uh, plugins like uh, Superior Drumming Drummer, which is my favorite plugin uh, in life. It's just great. And uh, with this one, we can emulate that behavior by shifting the velocity. So right now, the velocity of the uh, of the of the midi clips are kind of a uh, you know all the same. And this is not very human. It sounds, it's going to sound a little bit robotic. So what we can do, we can just go offset a little bit of timing. Some of them are just going to be rushing. Some of them are going to be dragging. But now if I go to velocity and I go to kind of a, an obscene amount, it's going to sound weird because it's too much. It's like this drummer has no idea how to play. So of course, you know, in this case, maybe higher velocities for this will not do the trick. Maybe we just need to do just a tiny bit, just a little bit. And there is, there, there is a little bit of a variation. And let's record and see, we, let's see what we get. And, and if you hear the hi-hats closely, yeah, there's kind of a, yeah, there's a, a, you know, a certain movement and that's what, you know, makes the sound a little bit more human. Now, if we check the velocities, they're just different. And that, that's very cool. Now, at the end of the day, maybe this one is just too hard and the change in velocity right here when you go from this to this is maybe too much. So maybe you're just going to need to adjust this one just a little bit. That's how it works. So, yeah, that's what it does. It's just going to do the pretty much the same we do with timing, but now it's going to do it with velocity, right? Pretty simple. Now, of course, then you have the chance. And this is something that you're kind of uh, uh, getting uh, with pretty much all the devices and it's a way of randomizing the incoming notes. So of course, when the um, when this plays, all these notes are going to this device and this device will change how they behave, uh, right? And then it's gonna go, go out and do the sampler. So all the notes are coming and going through this one. So the chance is going to, of course, uh, kind of skip some notes. So if I do play, notice that some notes some MIDI uh, notes are not just playing. And this is because if we have a 50-50 chance of them, uh, you know, of getting them played. If I go up, now we have more chances. So some of them are just not gonna go, it's not gonna be there. So this is a nice way to add a little bit of, again, randomization. But it's it's kind of a it's not in the same way we do with timing. It's not not for the same purpose. We do the timing and the velocity to add a little bit of that human sound. The chance is we use it for more creative ways. Maybe I like the hi hat and I just would like to skip some of the some of these notes and see you no know, see if, we, if it sounds better. And that's why you get it. But you can, you know, maybe disregard this one and not use it. The plug that's humanized, it's all about the timing and the velocity, of course. Now, of course, you can do this with a with some chords, but it's just, it's just a little bit different. So I'm going to go and just show you. I'm going to toggle this active. I'm going to reset everything back to default. So we are pretty much not doing anything. And I'm doing the OBS XA with a kind of a organ sound. And it's a pretty dumb sound. And notice that all the notes are kind of a uh, perfect, right? So it would be cool to add a little bit of randomization to this, a little bit of human. Okay, so I'm gonna go and maybe do a little bit of timing 
And right now, it's just going to do something a little bit more abrupt. I'm going to do plus minus. So go so we can, uh, you know, rush and we can uh, drag. And then I'm going to change the velocity a little bit. So now, of course, the, the sound is going to change. And it sounds a little bit more messy, which is which means human, human. Now, of course, some of the notes are a little bit bad. Oh, of course. I'm recording the hi-hat. Let me just go and select the uh, chords right here. So I'm going to go and record the chords. And you can now, uh, from, the, from the distance, you can see that we get this randomization. Now, sometimes it's just a little bit too much. And now, of course, remember that Bitwig or this device, it's not a human. It's a, it's a machine. So it cannot recognize when you're doing a chord or when you're playing single notes. So some of them are just going to be, you know, just a little bit, maybe a little bit too much. So this uh, this device works very well with with drum with drums, for example, or single uh, MIDI notes. It works good if you uh, with chords or many uh, many notes in this case. If you just used a tiny bit, if not, it's just gonna go and you know it's just gonna do something like this, which is not very real. So okay, so I'm gonna go there. I'm just gonna do just a tiny bit, and on the velocity, well, you know, we can you just leave it right there. So I'm going to go and play it. Now it sounds a little bit better. And it's because we are not offsetting too much. It's just offsetting just a tiny bit, which is what we, what happens when you play chords. Um, and that's it. You know, that's the, uh, that's the whole device. Really, really um, useful device. Of course, it's not for everybody. It's not just, just not going to generate sound, but it will add a little bit of that some something that humans can add when, whenever they play instruments. So yeah, all right. So hopefully you learned something today. Uh, remember to like the video, to subscribe, and to check Patreon, of course.